Welcome, everybody. <laughs> this is the first of our instant pot cooking class. You know, it's been a difficult year for all of us, and we've been networking in our breakout rooms, and we're learning more about our colleagues. And it was really fun to, I have to say, Susie and Rosemary are, new, are my new power partners for cooking. <laughs> uh, we both learned that we all learned that we both, uh, we all enjoy um, instant pot cooking and we thought, let's get away from the, the normal conversations of like, what's going on with COVID, the caregiver shortage, swallowing issues, caregiver recruitment. So we thought we would do something fun and different. So I hope you'll enjoy this um, instant pot class. We're going to um, make some cool stuff, but first I want to introduce Susie Carbray and her little one who's going to be her um, camera person. <laughs> and right. Rosemary Gerstner, um, you're flying solo. And um, Susan Skatchel, me, I'm going to be, um, this is my my uh, virtual, <laughs> my, my dream kitchen to be someday. So welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, we have three dishes we're going to prepare for you tonight. Rosemary's going to make um, a, a whole chicken from Frozen. And Susie is going to make a chicken mole chili. I can't wait. And I'm going to demonstrate how to make a one pot pasta on dinner tonight. So Rosemary's dish takes the longest. So why don't we get you started, OK? Sounds good. All right, hi everybody. So as Susan said, and I'll be sort of adjusting the camera here as I go, I'm gonna do a whole frozen chicken. This is my chicken. And if you listen, hold on, my alarm's going off. If you listen, this thing is frozen. It is frozen solid. The reason I like the idea of using a frozen chicken, I don't know how many of you are Costco people, but I certainly am a Costco person. You get those great whole chickens. You're, they have great organic whole chickens for very, very affordable, affordably priced. And, you know, you bring them home, but unless you're going to use chickens within the next, you know, week, you inevitably need to freeze one. And, some, you know, I think a lot of places say break it down, you know, you can freeze it in parts, but I always just end up sticking it in the freezer. And then what? You know, you have to wait frost, blah, blah, blah. You forget about it. It's in there for years. But this, you can literally take it frozen from the freezer and change the price. To save time, all I've done to this, I've, I've pre, I've, I've trust it a little bit. I've just, you know, closed the ends there. I have seasoned it with salt and I chose this shawarma seasoning. But you can use whatever, it doesn't matter. Whatever you like. If you like thyme, if you like paprika, whatever you want. Rub it, I rub some olive oil, I rub the seasoning, I rub salt all over it. I'm putting it in the pot. And first you put it in the trivet. The trivet will help you. It creates a little bit of space beneath and it will also help you down and out because it is a piping hot chicken when it's finished. I'm gonna put the chicken in the pot. I'm gonna adjust my camera here a little bit. Get my hands hot there. I'm gonna put in one cup of water. If I was good and if I was a good cook, I would have had chicken broth in my kitchen at all times, which every good cook should, but I didn't. So I'm gonna use one cup of water. Rosemary, could you use wine too? Absolutely, absolutely. That would be very aromatic, absolutely. Probably still mix it with the, some of the, with the wine. You're going to lose a little bit more because some of the, the alcohol is going to, I mean, the alcohol is going to burn off, but mix it wine. I've definitely done chickens with using just wine. When you buy those chickens from Costco, do you have to make sure that you get the ones that don't have the gizzards inside? So thank you, Susan. You always have to check. Even if it says that it doesn't have gizzard inside, usually what it says is there may be gizzards. So before you freeze it, you need to check inside. However, there have been times when I have not, when I have forgotten to check inside, I have frozen it and I have realized that, okay, yeah, there's probably gizzard in there. Honestly, that's all good stuff. It doesn't affect the 
chicken. It doesn't, it goes with the Costco chickens. It's not a pack. It's not like plastic. It's just the gizzards. People eat those anyway. You can just pull it out when you're finished. Good to know. I like to put some other aromatics in there. Onions and garlic is what I like to do. How much you want to put in, just, it, it, it doesn't matter, you know, what you feel like. This is a three pound chicken. The, that I think is the ideal um, way to really get in the most efficient use of your instant pot with a garlic chicken. Throw some garlic in, put the garlic on top. Okay. At this point, it's ready to start. Even though I did some of the prep before, I mean, we're talking about like a total of maybe 10 minutes of prep, maybe from taking it out of the freezer. And why do you have to tie the legs? I feel like when I've done it, I just pop the whole thing in there. You don't have to. When you don't tie it, you end up with like this. When it comes to that. Yeah, <laughs> you end up with this Fred Eagle. And it's not, it's not, it's not exactly like platter ready as spread eagle. It just looks a little bit nicer to kind of keep them trussed together. Okay. That makes I bet sense. it makes it easier to pull it out of the instant pot when it's all done. Absolutely. Yeah, it's a good tip. So I have my okay. um, see. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, power. We're now we have power. Put on your lid. And as you will see us do multiple times tonight, the first thing I do is you set it to seal. Um, that is like the most important thing with your Instant Pot. You want it to be set to seal instead of set to vent because that is how it's going to be enabled to provide pressure. And then go to pressure cook. This. A whole frozen chicken is going to be approximately 10 minutes per pound. I have a three pound chicken. I know that for three pounds, it's about 39 minutes. I started it. It's sealed. It's on. It's going. Wow. Now we wait. Okay. Can't wait. Yep. Yep. And I noticed we have different models of Instant Pot. I have the Lux, L-U-X. Not that I know what the difference is, but I don't have a yogurt button, which I think is our difference. Oh, okay. I, I got the yogurt button. I've got the duo. I have okay. the duo. I have the duo, yeah. I believe mine is six quarts. Yeah, mine is two. Okay. That's okay. my part. Okay, so how long do you think it's gonna take to come to pressure? I think it's gonna take about 15 minutes to come to pressure. Okay. 10 to 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. um, we shall see, it's 511. I will let you guys know when it comes to pressure and then we'll, okay. we should see, we shall see. Okay, very nice. Susie, you wanna get started on your dish? Okay, here we go. So I'm doing a chicken mole chili. So we'll start with the chicken. I'm just going to put everything in here and start it up. I pre-browned my chicken. And what's really nice with the Instant Pot is I actually just put the air fryer lid on, and that's how I brown the chicken. And then now I'll just pop it back in. Susie, when you brown it, do you coat it with like any olive oil or anything? Sometimes I do. Today I didn't. I just put it under the air fryer because I knew I'd have all the seasonings with the chili. Um, but if I were just eating it, I would. Yeah. Or I do like a lot of vegetables that way with the air fryer lid. So now we'll do all the chili ingredients. I just have diced tomatoes. I'm going to let my assistant pop in there. We have pinto beans. And you don't drain the beans? I pre-drain the beans. 
Okay. Rinsed and drained. These are just some uh, kidney beans. We will do some tomato paste. Which is more or less um, ketchup. More or less <laughs> ketchup here. <laughs> if you don't have tomato paste, literally just use like galata. That's his recommendation, not mine. <laughs> It's like the exact same thing besides like there's a lot more salt in it. Uh, I'll tell you a secret about ketchup. If you don't have a uh, cocktail sauce for your shrimp, mm -hmm. you can use ketchup and horseradish sauce. And Miles mm -hmm. loves shrimp, so that's a good tip for him. Okay, I've got a can of just green chilies. I can just look. This, do you guys ever cook with the chipotle peppers? Yes. No, I haven't. So I, I really just want mainly the sauce out of here. Sometimes I'll use like um, just the chipotle sauce that you can buy, but I only got the peppers. So I'm gonna do two tablespoons of the peppers. Actually, I'm gonna do like half a tablespoon because what I do is I add the spicy stuff after somebody gets served. So I'm uh, just gonna do a little bit and then I'll add more later. <laughs> Let's do, um, we're gonna make a chicken broth. So we just have the powder for the chicken broth. Now that's cool, Susie. Show us a close up of that. So it's um, just like the powder. It's called Lono Life. And then you just mix it in with the water. So I have a cup of water. So it's kind of like bouillon, bouillon, but yeah, powder. But, but powder, yep. Okay, I'll let you clear that away. I do the salt. Or um, kind of the key ingredient to mole is chocolate. So I'm gonna do a tablespoon of chocolate powder, chocolate powder, cocoa powder, cocoa powder. Do you use cocoa or cocao? Yeah, it's cocao. So the like here. What makes cocoa, cocoa, and cacao, cacao? Just the sweetening. Do you know? I don't know. I don't remember. That's my guess is if it's sweetened or not. Okay, and then there's usually some form of nuts. And so depends on the recipe. I just use peanut butter for ease. So I'm going to put in two tablespoons of peanut butter. This seems super kid friendly because you're using chocolate and peanut butter. So like they would something chocolate. they recognize. I, I, I tried the chocolate earlier and it is disgusting. <laughs> it has zero sugar in it. Like it's disgusting. But it's good in the mole, right? Yeah, yeah. But it's like disgusting miracle. <laughs> and I do the salt. Okay, we are going to do a teaspoon of salt. Okay. Okay. I'm going to do a teaspoon of cumin. Okay. And I'm going to do like probably a third of a teaspoon of cinnamon. Oh, yum, yum, yum. A little too much. Okay, you want to dump that for me? I think that's the secret ingredient. You can have to send I like cinnamon and savory things a lot. And then I'm going to do a third a cup of raisins. Okay. 
Okay, and that is everything. So I'm gonna stir it up and then I'll turn it on and then I will add more of the Chipotle's after it's done. But otherwise that's it, stir it up, put the lid on. I'll cook it for eight minutes. When you did your air fried chicken, how long did you have to air fry it? 20 minutes. So 10 minutes on each side and then I just chopped it up. Okay. So I'm gonna do pressure cook for eight minutes and we're done. Wow. Wow. Yum, yum, yum. Can't wait. Easy. It's easy. You just need tortillas now. <laughs> wait, well, I don't think we have tortillas. We do. Oh, I thought we were done. So we're going to shift over to Italy now, and we're going to do a one-pot pasta meal. I prepared um, a couple things in advance. I have my um, Instant Pot uh, warming up, and what I did, I drizzled some olive oil in the bottom of my, my liner, and I had Italian sausage. I tend to use the mild, but sometimes I'll get the hot stuff. There's five links in here. I um, just take it out of the link and dump it in my pot. Now this I already browned. Um, some people like to have the chunks of you know, sausage. Um, we don't. So I take my potato masher. Can you see my potato masher? Mm -hmm. And I, as it's browning, I just stir it around and um, uh, chop it, kind of smush it so it's like little pieces. So if you can see, you know, I have the pieces yeah. of the food. So then it kind Susan, of what you're demonstrating. What you're showing is an important feature of the Instapot, which is the saute feature, right? Yes, I have the saute feature. It takes about a minute or two to really warm up, but you don't have to, you know, like your stove, you don't have to wait for the pot to get hot before you add your olive oil, just dump it all in. And the sausage already has a lot, a lot of fat in it, so I really don't need a whole lot of um, oil, but, you know, use good um, extra virgin olive oil if you can. So, you know, I, I browned my meat. It's all smashed in my little, my little tiny pieces. Um, I toss in some chopped onions. You know, I have an onion, good size onion. We like onions. And I just, I've already pre-browned them. So I just dump them in with my meat. Get all that goodness in there. So I kind of let that do its thing for a little bit. If you're just starting with your meat, you want to make sure that you get all the pink out of it. You want to have it cooked, but not burnt because you're going to cook it in the thing. Um, I also have about a good healthy two cups of chopped mushrooms. I use organic white mushrooms. I like to add these in because it gives my sauce and dish a little more um, density, you know, a little more hearty, even in the summer. And, and mushrooms just, they absorb whatever sauce or juice you're cooking it in. So I just throw those in there and I, I stir it all up so it's all mixed up with my meat and my onions and whatever, you know, juices on the bottom. And they don't really take that long to cook. I mean, really, I'm just kind of warming them up and getting everything mixed in. Smells so good in here. Oh, I did add a, a little uh, clove of garlic. Just chopped it all up and dumped it in. You know, I'm a big fan of convenience, so I get the stuff in a jar and just <laughs> done. That way my hands don't smell. <laughs> Correct. But that's an enormous time saver, too. I mean, you can, yeah. chopping up garlic takes a while. I know. Yeah. And half of it ends up on the floor as I'm trying to chop it. <laughs> right. I'm all into saving time. So one of the things I want to suggest, use a good pasta. 
and watch your boxes or your bag. Always try to use a pound. Sometimes I'll find stuff on sale and I'll bring it home and it's like, it's 12 ounces. So make sure you got a good pound of um, whatever kind of noodle you want. We like the big ones. And I like the ones that have like penny, there's the smooth and there's the one with the little lines on it. I like the one that have the little lines on it because I think your sauce sticks on it a little bit easier than the, than the smooth stuff. So everything's browning and kind of simmering in here. Also, I want to talk about sauces. If I have to buy jar sauce, Rails is the bomb. Also, it's this is the 28 ounce jar. There's another sauce I like. It's okay, but it is only 24 ounces. We like sauce. For me, those extra four ounces really makes a difference. I also like to dump in some diced tomatoes. And I need a fork to get this lid open. So I like two jars. Sometimes I just get the one big one, but I didn't have any big ones. So I have two, two cans of diced tomatoes. Where's my camera? Okay, here we go. Don't drain them, just dump the sauce and the tomatoes right in. And I'm gonna do two. Now notice I really haven't done anything. Oh, here's Marlene, okay. So what I do is I take a spoon and I just kind of spread the tomatoes over the top. I don't stir a thing. Do not stir at this point at all. Take your box of noodles. Pour it right over everything. Do not stir. Don't touch it. I take my jar sauce and I pour it all over my noodles, not stirring a thing. Now I wanna get all this extra goodness in here. So I'm gonna fill up my jar of water. And I fill it almost full. So what I want to do is I want to make sure I have enough water in my pot for my noodles to cook. So I pour it in and I pour it on the edge. I don't pour it in the middle to smash everything. I pour it around the edge. And what I want to do is bring the water up to almost to where I can see it. Sometimes I have to do like one and a half of these. I'm gonna try to move my, my camera, see if you can see. See where my um, water is? It's right where the noodles start to pop. Haven't mixed a thing, haven't stirred anything. Water's added, I'm good to go. And this is the cool part. The way 16 minutes to come to pressure. The chicken just went 16 minutes to come. I was almost correct. So this is great. I don't have to heat up another boil boiling pot of water and heat, heat up my kitchen. And it's great in the summer because you're not adding all this humidity to your house. So I've got mine set. And actually I'm gonna do um, pressure cook, pressure cook and get this three minutes, three minutes. This is tried and true. If you look at your box of pasta, if it says cook for, you know, a traditional way, um, you know, like nine minutes, cut it in half and take off another minute. That's kind of like my, my recipe mm -hmm. for when I'm cooking um, pasta. So That's really good to know. Nine minutes I think I have minutes. to look that up every time. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, you're better off undercooking it because you can always put the lid back on and zap it and go for another minute or so. Um, but it's so fast. So I, I'm done. It takes about nine minutes to come to pressure, three minutes to cook. And then I, I actually walk my whole thing outside my back door and hit my release button. So all the steam's outside. <laughs> and then we come back and I stir it and then we enjoy. 
Susan, why are you so insistent about not stirring it when you put the pasta in? Um, because you want to keep the water as much on the bottom so you don't get a burn. Um, and uh, it, the, the Instant Pot, the way it cooks, it just steams everything so you really don't have to cook a, a, a lot. You know, you don't have to stir it at all. So you have the meat, the mushrooms, the pasta, the sauce, the water, and the water goes to the bottom. Yeah. Your meat, your onions, mushrooms. Mm -hmm. I added the tomatoes with all the juice and I did two cans of tomatoes. Then I added the, the box of pasta and then my jar. Remember I used, I used the big one, 28 ounces. I filled it once and then I didn't quite do half. So. You know, and sometimes depending on how bulky the noodles are, sometimes I use less water. But I just watch to see that the water comes right to where the noodles are in the pot. And then we're good. Then we're good to go. And I look at I have nothing to clean up. <laughs> That's the best part, right? Marlene, are you an Instant Pot fan? I've never bought one. I've never used one. But when I saw that Susan was doing this, I thought I, if I get, can get home from work in time, I can at least learn a little bit about cooking in an Instapot before I buy one. You should get one. I have a whole frozen chicken in my Instapot right now. Okay. Frozen, solid, whole. And it, it will be done in uh, 36 plus 10, about... 45 minutes, it'll be completely finished and cooked. That's and Susie has wild. chicken mole, and obviously Susan has a beautiful one. That's wild. Well, I was a little bit concerned when Susan said she takes it outside and to let the steam out. <laughs> I don't have an outside. I don't take mine out, but you, you just have to be careful. Okay, well, I don't have an outside. I live in a condo building on the 16th floor, so there is no outside. Right here. Do you have a patio? No, no patio. Hallway. <laughs> I know a lot of neighbors knocking on your door. What are you making in there? <laughs> no, you, you don't have, I just like, I prefer to vent it outside. Um, I mean, it does, it just spray a little bit. Now, when you're making like a, a meat dish, um, they call it natural release. So when it's done cooking, you might do a natural release for 10 minutes. So you just let it sit and then you do the manual release and then you don't have as much steam to worry about. Okay. Um, but since I'm doing, you know, something complete, a grain, um, right. I don't want it to cook anymore. I want to stop it. So I need to get that steam out fast. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah. 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 If you have something that sprays a lot, you can put a dish towel on it. Yep. Okay. But then this gets really hot. Uh -huh. So you gotta be careful when you pick it up because you'll you'll burn yourself. Yeah. Okay. It's scary, but it's not that scary. No. And people ask you, well, what is pressure cooking? You know, it's a it's a method of cooking in a sealed vessel. This is your vessel, your instant pot. You have a liner and a lid, and underneath the liner is that that sensor thing. So the pressure cooking. It's a faster way to cook and it helps retain all the moisture, especially when you're cooking meat. How many times do people overcook pork, chicken, turkey? I mean, it's like, ugh, you need all the sauce and the gravy just to like swallow it. Um, <laughs> and, and the Instant Pot and it just enhances all those delicious flavors because it's not cooking out in, in, your, in your kitchen. It's right. all contained. Well, I remember my mom using a pressure cooker. I mean, I remember it from the old days. So I know about it. It's just that I haven't used a new Instapot. And it's very different than the old pressure cookers. Well, the Instapot was at, or not the Instapot, pressure cooking, pressure cooking was actually invented by a French physicist in 1679. So it's been around for a long, long time. But it wasn't until World War II where it became a household cooking um, uh, appliance. 
right. people realized how much fuel they could save by shortening the cooking time. And they right. could also use a less quality cut of meat because of the pressure and the infusion of moisture. Right. So there were a lot of benefits, but it wasn't until World War II that people really started to um, use pressure cooking. Right. And then, you know, you talk about the one, you know, that you remember, the conventional one, which was on the stove top, and it was kind of rickety, and it was really noisy because it hissed and shook and shook, <laughs> and it yeah. was a scary thing. It was scary, couldn't, and, you know, they, they did explode, and then you'd end up with everything on, on the ceiling. <laughs> um, but the electric pressure cookers, um, they have that instant pot, the instant liner, um, there's an electronic heating element underneath, and then you have all the temperature and pressure sensitive sensors for um, safety. So it's that whole closed loop system, um, and you know, you just put it. And it's all in. about steam. It's all about steam cooking, really. Yep. yep, it's great. Yep. So the Instant Pot, it was. Um, it's from. It's a brand that was developed in Canada. Um, and it was a way for people to consolidate the different cooking methods, you know, whether it was pressure cooking, slow cooking, um, you can make rice, uh, yogurt, uh, air fry now. So it gives you a lot of variety of ways to cook and minimize how many appliances you have sitting out on your counter. Right. I, mean, I, I don't have half the stuff I do anymore. I don't need them until they break. Right. So it's, it's that kind of efficiency that, um, you know, I think is great for us busy working moms. Um, before everybody came on, I, I was doing some research and the, um, the guy who invented this instant pot, um, his name is Robert Wang. He wanted to be the Steve Jobs of kitchen appliances. Wow. And he and his wife were both in the, the tech industry and, you know, they're working long days and they had two little kids and they were getting tired of the fast food and um, they were, he was looking for a way to have an automated cooking machine that would help him make these healthy meals for his family. So he, here's this brilliant guy. He's got a PhD in computer science and um, a background in artificial intelligence. So he was thinking about like the, the crock pot, you know, the crock pot, um, that's that slow cooker. Um, but as more women were starting to enter the workforce, you know, the crock pot was great and it's still a great um, kitchen appliance. But if you wanna make your dinner at night, here you are, you're making breakfast and now you're chopping and preparing, you're thinking about dinner. It wasn't really saving you a lot of time. And then, you know, it's gotta cook for, you know, eight or 10 hours. Um, but it, it, so that wasn't exactly what he was looking for. So he, he wanted to find a way to make life easier. So he thought about the electronic pressure cooker, which was native to his um, homeland in China. And he wanted to find a way to, to cook faster. So mm -hmm. he, he designed this, he had a lot, you know, some hiccups, but his first instant pot sold on Amazon in November of 2010. Can you believe over 10 years ago? Wow. It for $140 then. So as sales started to trickle in on Amazon, um, they, they were actually like th those Black Fridays that they have and those, um, those, those prime days, the um, amount of sales that he experienced on Amazon just was like ridiculous. Like in one day, they sold 30, 300,000 units. Oh, wow. That's crazy. Shark Tank. <laughs> yeah. You know, so this guy, this guy was genius. And believe it or not, there's over 6 million people that follow some type of instant pot related account on Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> How many are you in? <laughs> I'm in at least a couple. <laughs> now, do you guys ever use the slow cook function on the Instant Pot? I think it works better than, you know, the, the old crack pots. Yeah. 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 I've used it. I use the soup, I use the soup function a lot. 
um, you know, just dump all my cans in, you know, drain all my beans and dump them all in. Um, and you guys who have both made chicken, okay, Rosemary, you got the whole chicken. What do you do with all those chicken bones? Gotta make broth, baby. Bone broth. It's the <laughs> best. It's the best. It is. You know, I save all my bones and I put them in a Ziploc bag and throw them in the freezer till I've got a bag full and then toss yep. them all in here, cover them up, put my onions, my carrots, my celery, and, you know, some yep. spices and stuff. And um, it's the best. It but, really is the best way to make broth. It really yields the gelatin from the bones. Um, even better than just doing it traditionally, you know, for that long, long cook until, you know, you see that the bones have yielded their broth um, or have yielded the gelatin. Yeah, it's awesome. I do the same thing, Susan. I got a big freezer bag just with like chicken carcasses in it, in my freezer, <laughs> which I try to keep track of because otherwise it's like a scary thing to pull out if you forget yeah. about it. It would be. Yeah. So your power of attorney documents, right? <laughs> That's right. Oh, that's so funny. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> oh. Susan, what do you do with all of your chicken bones? What's that? What do you do with all your chicken bones? You know, I usually buy boneless. <laughs> Doesn't have any. I got to try it. Yeah. 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 You just have to have the freezer space to for the broth um, because because oh, you get a lot so much. I mean, you get a couple, you know, a couple quarts, um, and that's you know that's what you have to sort of balance. I feel like if you don't have an additional freezer, um, freezer space is always at a premium. So that's. Susan, don't you buy bone broth too from Costco? How does that come? Like, uh, okay. Six or eight. Okay. Yeah. 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 But you know what? You can give a, give it away as a nice gift. That is a nice gift. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Especially to people that you know cook. Also, if you if you want to just freeze it in ice cube trays, so then you can just pop out a little cube. Toss those in a bag after they're frozen, and use the cat uh, the cubes for different things that you just needed a little oomph. That's a great you know. idea. That is a good idea. You know, like if you're making rice and you just want to flavor it a little bit, um, sometimes just dropping in a cube or two of chicken broth gives it a nice little. Mm. Can you see I'm steaming here? It's starting to do its thing. Yep. In, in any minute, I'm going to hear my little sensor thingy is going to pop up. And mine just got to pressure, but I didn't pay attention to how long it's been. This yeah. is my favorite thing to cook for myself. The Instabot does a very nice salmon. Frozen Ooh. salmon is what I, I get the Costco, um, like the wild Costco salmon, which is good. Um, and I think it takes a minute. <laughs> <laughs> like literally, I mean, you, One you minute? know, it takes you have to, it, 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 it's, you set it for a minute. It takes probably more time than that to come to pressure. Um, but it's lovely. You know, it, it's only, it, there's the, the, the one thing with the Instapot is there can be a residual smell on, um, the lid, not the apparatus inside that's stainless steel. That's going to shed whatever you put in it. Uh, okay. but like, I feel like our lid eternally smells like chili because that's what we, you know, make a lot. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, it, it does do a nice fish. That's cool. Yeah. And do you I ever go to Costco because I don't have a car? Okay. okay. I, I live mean, in I the live city. city too. I got you. I got you. I in, you a, in a high rise, and I don't have a porch, but I have a stunning view. Do you want to see my view? Yes. I have a stunning yeah. view of the sky in <laughs> Lake Michigan. So here's my view. Oh my wow. goodness. So you're right. You're in Lincoln Park. You're in Lincoln Park West? No. No. Oh, you're 20, where are you? 2800 North Lakeshore Drive. Okay. So now you guys know I don't go to Costco. So I don't buy anything in bulk. 
I, uh, I live alone, so I cook for myself, yeah. unless I have friends over. And um, I just wanted to learn something new from Miss Susan. So now I'm kind of motivated. Maybe I should get one of these, but I want a little Instapot. I don't want a big ass one. I don't have enough. They have a little one. I don't have enough cupboard space for a big one, you know? Do you have a little one, Susie? No, I don't, but I've seen them. I've seen yeah. little ones, like a three quart, I think. Three or four yeah. quart, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's what I want to try. You should come and cook down at your condo. <laughs> I love making soups. So this sounds like a really great thing to make soups in. Instead yeah. of the old fashioned way with the big pot on the stove and all that. Um, so yeah, now I'm kind of motivated because I love making soups. What I like, we want to talk about some of the accessories you can get. That's that's you and Susie. I don't use you guys are the fancy ones. Oh. <laughs> Show us some of your accessories. Okay, this is one I don't use very often, but it's a steaming basket, and so you can have like a couple layers of things, and then cool. when you put it in, it just like folds up to fit right inside. Wow. I don't really use it as much as I thought. What I use a lot, I'll show you. I actually have yesterday's leftovers in here. <laughs> oh, great. It's like a double layer pan. So, you know, I cooked like such a bottom layer and then just some vegetable in the top layer. You just put it in and then you can shoot it in the same time and then store it in the same container, which is really nice. This I use all the time. That's a great idea. And then the other thing I use pretty frequently is just the, this is the air fryer lid. So you use a different lid if you're going to air fry, but you cook within the same container. Oh, I didn't know you could air fry in an Instapot. Yeah, but you have to buy the air fryer separately. Okay. So you're using the same container. So you could cook meat in there to get it really tender and then trade out the lid and use the air fryer to get it crisp on the outside. Wow. So My pasta that is done. Does that That's make awesome. a good fried chicken then, an air fryer? Yeah, and I honestly do like... I do frozen food in here. Like this was just some frozen sausages and some frozen vegetables and I just put it in, but I don't have to tin to the stove, which is my favorite part about it. I can get something cooking and I can go do something else. That's so cool. Mm -hmm. Thank you. For I'm just out that my idea. door I like that. and I'm going to vent this. So okay. three minutes. Took eight minutes to get to pressure and three minutes to cook. So I'm going to go vent mine right outside my door. Be back. Okay. <laughs> oh, so I don't get to see it, huh? Not the vent, apparently. That's the, You'll that's see ours. I, I do mine right on the counter. So do I. Um, Susie, when you do your, like, frozen Trader Joe's medley, um, what do you do? So, because Marlene, Susie had said that one of her favorite things to do is, like, the frozen food from Trader Joe's, like the meatballs or the vegetables. She just sort of buys them and like throws them in. You put it in with like broth and then you set it for what time? So if I were just doing like frozen meatballs and frozen vegetables, I'd have the trivet in there and okay. then I put the water in, okay. but then I just put the food in that pan I just showed you. So I'd have okay. the meatballs dry or if I wanted them in sauce, you know, I just dump my pasta sauce in there and then I'd have the vegetables in the other layer. Okay. And for that kind of stuff, I would probably put it on like two or three minutes only because it's frozen, right. but it doesn't take long at all. And right. so that's just a way to heat up your frozen food. But I do that all the time okay. or I'll do like one layer, I'll do rice. So I'll have like my chicken broth and my rice. And then in my other layer, I would do my meat or vegetables or whatever I wanted to serve with it. Okay. That's great. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's awesome. So how long have you two been hooked on your Instapot? <laughs> I bought my Instapot in, um, I bought my Instapot in 2017. Um, 
that is when um, I had my first child, my husband, and we were living, we still live in the city, but at that time, uh, we were living in a very small apartment, and um, I needed uh, I, I needed sort of a space saving device, but I also needed to sterilize a lot of bottles. Mm -hmm. And you could sterilize bottles in the Instapot. In addition oh, really? to cooking. Yeah. So, yeah. So that's when I got it. And I since used it for now, we have, we've moved to a different place in the city, but I have, I guess, more space. But I haven't bought any more contraptions because I still use it for, you know, most of my cooking needs and still to sterilize bottles with my second kid. Um, so, yeah, so I guess mine was, yeah, 2017. Wow, that's I was cool. probably about the same. I got mine for Christmas one year and I did like just sit on it for probably six months being intimidated by it. And I, I do think there's a little bit of a learning curve because if you do the time too high, you end up with mushy food. So, oh. But you've got to keep trying it and kind of learning how long different things go. And then once you have it down that you don't overcook things, then it's, it's good. Yeah. Okay. That's cool. That makes so sense. mine just finished too. Mine's done too. Do you I just wanna... cut it off. It only took like four minutes to de to depressurize. So let me move my can off so you can see. So this is what it looks like. Look at how Beautiful. big the noodles are. That looks and right. then really I good. just start to stir. This is where you start to mix. Mm -hmm. And you could taste your noodle to see if it's um, uh, you know, the the tenderness that you like. We we tend to like things a little al dente. Oh, I can't see there. It's steaming up. <laughs> <laughs> but, but that's it. There's no burn on the bottom. I can feel the bottom. It's really smooth. My noodles look nice and fresh. That looks great. Oh, pour it into a bowl and put your Parmesan Reggiano cheese on it, and um, you're good to go. Oh, that looks good. That looks really good. If I lived close, honey, I'd be over for dinner. All right. I'd have you over. <laughs> Marlene, what are you having for dinner tonight? Oh, I haven't thought about it. I just barely made it through the day, okay? Okay. I don't think about food until I get home. So. <laughs> Do you walk to work? Yeah. 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 I mean, okay, I I'll do my right. quick yeah. release. While you're doing your- I just quickly, turn it. I got a couple other um, accessories that you guys might not have. Okay, and I'm going to do my re my quick release so you can see it, Marlene. Okay, cool. So you just turn the knob, and then it's going to let out the steam. So I just turn it so it's not under my cabinets. Oh, okay. Does your, your, does your stackable um, thing have a, a base on it so you can hold it easier? She might not be able to hear you over the steam. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I, I do. Okay. Yeah, this is great. It's very easy then to lift it in and out of the instant pack. Yeah, like this thing, and then you just That's, lift it out. Yep. This That's awesome. is to make hard boiled eggs. Seven eggs, five minutes in the pressure cooker, five minutes natural release, and then five minutes in an ice bath. They are so easy to peel, and you don't have that green line around your egg yolk. Wow. Oil oh, eggs are my favorite too. They come out perfect and consistent every time. And then I have a couple different trivets too. Um, I tend to use this kind when I'm making a big chicken. And then it helps to truss it because then it doesn't fly all over the place. This is cool. I make egg bites. Mm. Dirty thingy. So I got a couple of these. I got the small one and the big one. And then, you know, we What's were talking What's an egg about bite? Wait a minute. Elaborate. What's an egg bite? <laughs> if we had a Starbucks. Oh, wait, wait. Product placement. We've got to get a fee here. Um, the Starbucks egg bites. It's I don't like ever eat anything at Starbucks. I only drink cappuccinos. Okay. 
Well, they're like eggs, cream, and whatever filling you want, like a, a pepper, bacon, ham. Oh, they're so great. You just pick them up and go. Well, how is it prepared? Is it like well, you make, scrambled egg? Well, you make it like, um, you make your mixture, and then I just put them in here, just fill up my little container, my little hole. So it's like a scrambled egg. You yes. scramble the eggs, and then you add stuff. Yes, and then I put cheese on top, like cheddar cheese, and then put them in here. I forget how long they, they steam, and then let them cool, and then just pop them out. That's a neat idea. Yeah. Great little fast breakfasty food. Now you talked about you wanted to get a smaller instant pot because you're just cooking for yourself. But sometimes, if I'm making something and I, I'm not sure if I'm going to like it yet, and I don't want to make a big batch. I have a smaller pot, so it's called pot in a pot cooking, and it just fits <laughs> right in here. So I'm making a smaller version. Okay. Um, you know, so that might be something to consider when you think about buying, you know, a small yeah, one. Yeah, it's still got to fit in my cupboard, so I have to measure it to make sure it fits, right? <laughs> and then, you know, the, the um, ring, you know, you talk about the, the lid, you have your, um, ceiling ring here on the inside that goes all the way around. Um, some people have an issue with them because they kind of absorb all the smells. But some people have an extra ring, so they'll use one for sweet and one for savory. You know, I that, I that, that is amazing. That's a good I idea. A problem with um, my ring, like if it smells like garlic or, you know, I wash it, I dry it, I store it so my lid's upside down. Um, but people are like, oh, you know, I don't want my oatmeal to taste like garlic, but I've never had that problem. So I had an extra ring that I've never even used. I have never done this, but I've seen that you can like clean the, the seal in vinegar or something to get rid of the smell. But I haven't actually done it. That's good to know. So my chili is done. Oh, wait. Oh my God, that look good. <gasps> wow. It's hard to see because you're on a little tiny itty bitty screen there. <laughs> there we go. Wow. Okay. Uh, I'll, I'll serve it up in a little bit and, and you can yeah. see it better probably. So it takes longer to bring it up to whatever you call that steam or something than it does to actually cook it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'll show you this too. This is the container for the air fryer so that the air can get around. So you do use a different pot inside, okay. you, right? Oh my God. And then you can, you can like put this inside so you can have two layers of things air frying too. Oh, wow. Do you have to put that on a trivet too? Yeah, so that the air can get around it. So you put the trivet in, put that in and then have the li different lid. Cool. So that makes it like three feet tall when you add the air fryer on top yeah, of it. Yeah, it does. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, we have 10 minutes on the frozen chicken and then it will be finished. And you will, I will be able to prove <laughs> that it can be done <laughs> without exploding your kitchen. I can't Do we wait wanna to talk it. about some of our favorite recipes, some of the favorite things we've made. Sure. Where do you find your these recipes? Are there like Pinterest? Oh, that's where I go. Pinterest, Pinterest, Facebook. But also Marlene, the Instapot, when you buy one, it comes with a lovely cookbook. Oh, really? Yes. Okay. Which is, I think it, it's sort of foundational. It's a good place to start. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And there's and a natural chart in there that know. breaks down all the different things you want to cook and gives you an idea of how long it takes. Right. So, you know, you can improvise and use your own recipes, but the main thing is you just need to know how long you need to cook the meat for. Right, right. The timing. And pasta, because you don't want that to be too mushy. Ugh, that's gross. Mm -hmm. Or like vegetables. I'll do a lot of vegetables on zero. You can do zero. It just builds up to pressure and that's it. Oh, okay. Wow. You mean as well zero time. Or shrimp. Yeah, you can put it on zero. It just builds to pressure and Gone. then you're <laughs> Gone. Lentils are like that too. They yeah, I bet so. Mm -hmm. hmm. I've, 
done like a whole rack of ribs in it. I do um, boiled eggs a lot, rice a lot. That's cool. Ribs are I do, oh, I do, I'm sorry, Susan. But no, um, just to say what Susie was saying about the ribs, they're great. You know, you take them out and put them on, um, you know, a, a cookie sheet and just put your barbecue sauce on and finish them under the broiler until everything gets caramelized. The best. Um, I do a lot of, uh, I do a lot of frozen chicken, frozen chicken, uh, chicken, chicken, chicken for me. Uh, but like having those, I mean, it's because chicken forms the basis of so many other recipes, whether it be like to put in your salad, to put in anything, tacos, you know, pulled chicken sandwiches. It's just, it's just the best way of cooking a lot of chicken quickly, or I should say as quickly as possible. Um, but like also Coco Va is beautiful in the Instapot. Wow. Uh, I do chili. Uh, my husband is not a, my husband is a meat eater, like period. He'll like, he doesn't like a bean, he does nothing. <laughs> he gets his vegetables from smoothies. That's it. Like he'll have a smoothie, but everything, you know. So he he would never eat chili until I started doing this like all beef chili in the instant pot. It that like oh, it's so good, and it really just like locks down the flavor. Um, chili is one of those things that I think does benefit from like a really long cook if you're doing it a traditional method. And the instant pot just it does it. I don't know. It's like. 20 minutes, something like that. You know, it's it's a longer instant pot cook, but it's so good. And so it's basically beef and tomatoes and your seasoning. It's beef, tomatoes, and then I um I blend up tortillas um to like sort of simulate, you know, um what's the cornmeal called? Um matzo. To simulate like, the, like you know that cornmeal that is used in traditional Mexican dishes. So I blend up uh, tortillas. Um, I blend it with like the, um, you know, you pour, you pour in the meat, you put in the tomatoes, and then I put like water in the tomato can, kind of like Susan did with her, you know, uh, jar of tomato sauce to get the remainder. I put it in with the tortillas. I put it in the Ninja, and then I throw it in there and I turn it on. That's all right. Yeah. Yeah. So good. I mean, obviously in chili, you know, chili powder, but yeah. obviously you're making your husband happy. Okay. Fine <laughs> too. <laughs> That's I, a made, I made a cheesecake in mine and I was shocked at how good it was. Shocked. Really? Mm -hmm. Cheesecake. Oh cheesecake. my God. Cheesecake. That's you know, you make the same foundation, you know, your crust and your, your filling but you have to um, put it on a rack. You've got to fill, you know, you have to wrap the um, pan in foil and you put it in a water bath and you have to, you know, do I have a, oh my God, that pack? sounds a bit complicated. Oh, but it's, no, <laughs> it's, it's amazing. I mean, you know, you cook a decent cheesecake and it's like 45 minutes. You know? Right. Well, they are rather thick. <laughs> yeah. This is like seven minutes. It was unbelievable. Can you do quiche? In one of those things? Yes. 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 Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do that all the time. And yeah. you get a decent crust? Well, I make a crustless quiche. Oh, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm trying you to know what it. I like to do in the fall is homemade applesauce. It turns out so good. <gasps> like go awesome. pick the apples and then make the applesauce. Yeah. I think so, I would use your concept with the the two layered thing and do veggies and then something else with it because I make veggies a lot. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And I do that a lot. Yeah. Does it and matter I, if you put the veggies on the top or the bottom? I always do whatever needs to cook more on the bottom. Okay. So that usually my veggies are up higher. So have you had any instant pot failures? I have with overcooking vegetables and pasta in the beginning. Yeah. Yeah. Um, oh, oh, precious. Oh, yeah. Love. There's a visitor. 
I guess so. Yep. Well. <laughs> My husband gave me the eyes, like, just give me one second. <laughs> Please. <laughs> I've had a failure. Um, what was it? What is the Hungarian pasta dish with paprika? Goulash. 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 Awful. I, no, let me put it this way. It was delicious. Um, what do they used to call the hamburger and pasta? Like pasta or like hamburger helper kind of yeah oh so it was delicious hamburger helper didn't taste a bit like goulash <laughs> yeah. oh well <laughs> I know. but it was still good so it was, it was still good it was good hamburger helper yeah. oh my god hey you guys i have to go i have uh, another call i have to get on in 10 minutes and i need to no do problem it before i do that it's been such a pleasure hanging out with you. How often do you do this, Susan? Well, this was our first time. We thought we'd do something different. So I'm glad you were able to- One more minute. Oh, I can't wait. I'm gonna, I'm gonna manual release this, which is, it's gonna be a lot to manual release. Oh, yeah. Okay, this went off. All right, I'm gonna give it two minutes on natural and then I'm gonna manually release the rest of it. I'm gonna have to put a big old towel over it, but that's okay. Mm. Okay. Have and I can get pork chops at all. I've made pork chops in mine. Have you guys tried pork chops? Uh, no, but I'm interested in that because I like pork chops a lot. And um, my main issue with them is that I find that they are one of the most difficult things to cook. Um, they're like, it's sort of, I don't even, I don't know what the proper descriptor is, but you know, it's really, someone who makes a good pork chop is a really talented cook because they dry out so quickly. Um, so I'm interested to hear about that. I um, brown them. I guess the thicker ones would be um, the ones with the bone in because I think they have more flavor. Right. So I brown them in um, olive oil or grapeseed oil because that's the high heat. And then I take them out and I add in onions mushroom and a can of cream of celery soup nice you can, you can use cream of chicken but i like the the celery it's a little bit different and i get the yeah. less crunch. and you could add extra celery in it too and then i just bury the pork chops in the stuff and after they're browned <laughs> yeah uh -huh. and I just seal it up um and i think it's like 12 minutes Natural, we okay. eat, I think, 10 and then done. You serve it nice. over, or, you know, you got some nice gravy to put over a baked potato. That sounds so good. I'm going to get a towel and then I'm going to do this. Uh... Okay. Yeah, I haven't made a frozen chicken, so I want to see how this looks. <laughs> All right, here we go. Quite a bit of steam. I think that the, Susan, as you mentioned earlier, knowing when to vent it um, is really important to like the outcome of your dish because Instapot pretty much across the board always says, let it, um, you know, do its own thing for 10 minutes and then you can flip it. But that is not how, what yields the best results. So figuring out when to get out that steam is. Yeah, especially with meat. Yeah, that's the tricky part. I don't want to put my face in here. <laughs> Give a nice little steam. Yeah, these noodles are like perfect. Can you get the next place. No releasing. Wow. Wow. I think we need to have our own master class. I think so too. Eat your heart out, Thomas Keller. Oh, he's my favorite one. 
Have you seen Have you seen a season two with all the fish? Not yet. Oh, God. What's the show? Master Class. You have to have a subscription. Okay, but it comes in seasons. Um, they come in classes. So a couple of the chefs now have two different classes. Um, Chef Ramsey is on there. I wish Lydia would have one. Okay. Oh my gosh, that looks good. Oh, look at that. Can you see it? Yeah. Did the trusting really help keep it all together? Uh, it, it helps keep it all together. Here's the one thing about an Instant Pot chicken. You're never, ever going to get a crispy skin. It's just not going to happen. Um, one of the reasons that I like to use um, like the shawarma seasoning or something darker is because it does sort of give that illusion um, of a rotisserie chicken a little bit. It's more like a rotisserie chicken. Um, however, you can always put it under uh, in your oven to crisp it up. You can put it in the broiler. Um, but that is that is your trade-off. I never really call an Instapot whole chicken necessarily, it's not your ideal, um, you know, chicken to table dish, but it's the perfect thing for if you need to cut up a chicken to make, you know, do whatever else with. Um, uh, oh, you mute, there you go. go. Okay. Um, tacos, any sort of, of chicken dish. It, yeah, that's a good that's a good idea to put under the broiler to crisp it up if you want. Yep. So what are you gonna do with it today with the meat? Are you putting it in something else? Sure. Um, this one I'm going to cut up and this is gonna be pretty much like our fridge chicken. Like grab it for salads, grab it for a sandwich, grab it for, um, you know, I use, we have pitas, so like I, you know, and again, I went like I did shawarma flavoring on this. So, you know, my husband really likes pita and chicken. So this will feed us, like lunch feed us for a few days. That's what I'm specifically going to do with it. Easily, this could be dinner, you know. Usually when I do a chicken like this for dinner. You muted yourself again. I muted myself. Um, I like to do it with, uh, usually when it's for dinner, I do it with um, usually like taco seasoning or something, warm up tortillas, grabbing, you know, tacos. Um, that works so out really you, well. Do you use the skin since it's not browned? Um, I don't really, I usually take it off. Um, again, you can put it under the broiler to get that. I'm not like, how do I put this? I'm not trying to eat a bunch of chicken skin. It's sort of a great way to not eat part of the chicken that they tell us we're not supposed to eat because it's it's not it's not really what you look for. You know, the texture, and I've tried it a lot of different ways. The texture is good if you crisp it up, but this is really about the insides of this chicken are perfect. The skin, you take it off. And, and then the seasoning, the seasoning does get through to the meat. It does somewhat. Um, it the salt does, um, and the seasoning. I, I'd say that's where the aromatics really come in that you're putting into your pot. Um, I load it the skin with salt because inevitably the salt goes into the water, and that's what's going to come up along with the onion and the garlic. If you really sort of want it to be in a nice bath the bath is what's going to make it tasty there's you know the seasoning goes you know some of it goes into the water so that comes up too but that's really where it's at again i like the seasoning mostly for their color okay yeah cool and if you don't have that you can always use paprika <laughs> exactly now on um, for chicken breast like if you're just doing like chicken breast, then yes, the seasoning is going to go right into it. Because I take this out with chicken breast, I take it out, and then I just go at it with forks and I shred it. And that 
that is in there. Um, for the whole chicken itself, you know, it you 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 take the advantage of the time save, um, and you maybe sacrifice something else. And your chicken is just going to melt in your mouth because it's so moist. Correct. That's right. It's worth it. The inside is worth yeah. it. That's, That's right. Great. great choice, Rosemary. Excellent. And let's see that chili, Susie. All right. I'm going to garnish it a little bit here. All her little embellishments. Susie's chili bar. <laughs> Are you on Grubhub? What's that? Are you on Grubhub? <laughs> yeah. We'll deliver it right over. Can you see it? Oh, yes, looks beautiful. Oh, oh, that is beautiful. Love, love, love. Now, what kind of cheese did you put on there? I just did feta, um, just because it's a nice crumbly cheese. Sometimes I'll get like the co, what is it, cojita, mm -hmm. the crumbly Mexican cheese. But yeah, just feta, cilantro, onion. Very nice. Well, I think this concludes our um, our class tonight. This was really fun to do this with you guys. I couldn't think of two better partners to have fun with and enjoy it. Hey. Uh, Great idea, Susan. Yeah, we have to think of another one next month. We'll be back with more summer edition. <laughs> That's a fun idea. There we go. Okay. All right. Well, enjoy your dinners tonight with your family, and thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Have a great night. Bye. Bye. Bye.